The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Uh, feeling good, Lewis. Uh, well, here we are. Happy Friday, as my little grandsons would always say. All right, let's take a quick look here um, at the gold market starting out this week. This is the one that we think has made uh, a major turn here, folks. So we talked about this on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, we hit the exact, I mean, to the tick. I think within 10 cents of the exact 78% level, which was at 12,383. And we have a caller in today from Tipperon, California. Is that up by San Francisco, Daryl? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Up uh, close to like South I've, Toledo area. How are you? I, I, I remember. That's what I remember. My good friend Peter Lydes lives up in that area. And I remember going through there. What can I do for you, my friend? So I'm looking at the, the, the S&P and NASDAQ, but more specifically the, the S&P. I mean, it, it Topped on uh, on Wednesday, pulled back yesterday, and then right now it's it's kind of made a 0.618 retracement. Your your retracement back up here this morning, and yes. I'm just wondering what you what you think of it here. Is it is it is it shortable here? Uh, what are your take on equities here? Well, th th if you're going to short it, this is a place to do it because you're getting a rally back after a big move down. They're having a lot of uh, information today about the tax bill coming through. The key here, Daryl, is uh, this would be like a put on the tax bill because if that tax bill, something happens, uh, the market is not going to like that. And, uh, you know, we won't probably know about it until Monday. But, you know, you're coming into a holiday week, which is going to have a very positive bias. So the good part about this, you know exactly what your risk is here. It's about five S&P points. So I certainly wouldn't risk, uh, you know, any more than that. One of the things I wanted to mention, if you'll stay with me just a second here, because uh, it's something that I think uh, we all forget sometimes, and that is that we've had so many gaps here. If I can just find the chart, and I just did it a little while ago. Where did I put it? Anyway, um, oh, dear. Uh, this is very frustrating when I do this, but I, I have so darn many charts in here, I can't find it, aren't they? Anyway, we've had um, we've had seven gaps now since September the 3rd in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We filled one just the other day on the big down move. Uh, I forget what caused it, but um, uh, we've got, we still have six unfulfilled gaps going into September 3rd. My personal feeling is that we're going to fill a lot of those gaps you know, very, very quickly. So I do like to trade selling at the 61% retracement. I think it's about two points higher than where we're trading right now. We should hit that right after the opening. And then uh, I would risk no more than five points. That would be a maximum uh, that I would risk on that. Okay, very good. I appreciate that. I hope that it helps, you know, uh, but remember, always use a stop because uh, we're in a time period where, you know, we've had a tremendous uh, eight-month run, and we're coming into the Christmas season, which is usually bullish. So, uh, and but but the kicker is this this tax bill that could be the that could be the the big surprise, but we never know. Very good, thank you. Have a good weekend. Hey, you bet. Thanks for calling in, and a happy holidays to you. Thank you. Okay, okay, folks. Uh, we're going to get back to that gold market a little bit, and I wanted to. Um, to uh, try to show you, you know, what we're looking at here in gold. We, we were very bullish as we came in this week for a lot of different reasons. When you're looking at this gold chart, you're looking at these four ratios that are coming together uh, at the same time, I mean, and, and at the right price. This is the thing that really makes it interesting. Remember, we had a strong bias for gold to come down into December. Uh, we're in the middle of December uh, right now. And so this was uh, the area where we had to be looking. We didn't have a, you know, a really great timing signal uh, as far as astrological, unless Norm Winsky's was spot on, which it could have been for the gold because it certainly hit it right on the money. But the other one was the uh, the fact that we had all of these coming together. But but someone asked me last night in an email why what what turned me uh, from waiting till after Christmas on the gold to uh, going in 
you know, right, uh, you know, right when we did, you know, on Tuesday. And folks, there are two things that made me look at it. The first one I'm going to show you is in this is not a, a market that's, uh, you know, very big, but it's platinum and it's a very big industrial metal. And you'll notice that over the past year that completed a perfect, I mean, spot on uh, right down at that 873 level. A beautiful ABCD pattern, and as you can see, these ratios have been, you know, pretty much spot on over the years. The big ones, those are the ones that are measured in those red boxes. Um, that basically did it. And then the final thing was that if you look in the lower right-hand corner from October through December, the market came down and stopped exactly at the 1.618 level. I mean, it was within one dollar of a contract that sells for 870. Uh, well, it's trading 8, 880 and plus now, but uh, I mean, that's really, really close. So that's what we were looking at. That's why when we were looking at that gold down there at the uh, uh, 12838 level, anything under 1240, your risk there was only about three or four dollars. And now, you know, we've had a pretty good run. Yesterday, we were looking at the pullback in gold at 1254. Uh, it stopped, you know, very nicely. What do we do? We rallied 13 bucks already from that level. So if you bought gold yesterday, you put your stop at uh, your second unit at 12.54 and uh, let her rip. Because if gold can close above the 12.70 level, you've got something to hold on to for a long time. Because this has a possibility of being the big surprise. Uh, in 2018, because um, there's some divergences here that we've liked, especially uh, we're seeing that in silver. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, silver market, uh, if you also, this weekly silver chart stopped exactly at the uh, 786 also. Now, silver has not moved that much. I mean, we're trading above 16 bucks an ounce, but it hasn't moved nearly as much you know, as the gold has, and and maybe you know, maybe I'm I'm maybe I'm early. Maybe we're going to go into uh, another low in here. But even if we do that, we still have to be looking for a potential bottom, just because of the strong seasonality that we that we have in the gold market. I think it's very very um, very very interesting. You're correct, Mike. That 12.65 is very critical. We got up to 12.64, I believe, this morning, and we sold off a few dollars, which is just you know basically because it hit that 1.27 of the previous day's range. Well, what we'll see ha happen after that will be uh, very interesting because it's got quite a bit of. Uh, I think we've only come off three or four dollars. By the way, folks, you know, since this gold started in the bottom, you know, we've only had we had three five dollar corrections, and yesterday the correction we had was uh, eight dollars. So you know, you're not going to get much more than a five to eight dollar correction until this gold has given up the ghost and decides that it wants to go that it wants to go higher. So my guess is is that uh, it's got a real shot here. Uh, at something really big. That's what we're we're watching. I I told the folks at the that subscribe that subscribe to the 24/7 service that we have that I'm going to be very aggressive uh, on the gold here, and that's what we were doing yesterday. Is we sent out a video showing the importance of that 1254, and then uh, this morning we'll be looking at something. You know, if we close above that 1270 level, you'll be looking at something really big. Now I I'm not the type of trader that can add to strength because every time I seem to buy on strength, I should send my checks directly into the CME. We're going to take a break here, 877-127-877. Wow. I'll be right back. I'll give you the phone number in just a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk 
free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, we're back, folks. And what we're going to do now is talk a little bit about Tesla. Uh, it was in the news yesterday because Jim Chanos was on, uh, who's one of the better hedge fund managers, of course, and uh, he was one of the people that was screaming about Enron being a uh, scam when it was around 50, and of course it went to 95. But anyway, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to follow this. Uh, as you can see, Tesla is completing a Gartley right now at the 50% level. Uh, basically, what uh, Chanos was saying is they asked him what the evaluation would be for Tesla, and of course, you know, he said zero, and that you know brought out a lot of laughter and everything but as someone mentioned here in the den this morning that when they asked elon musk about uh jim chanos he also gave him a value of zero so those boys are in a, a contest looking for skunks and that's not what we're here for we're just looking at the patterns uh but frankly folks i'd never buy a car that i couldn't hear and that's a little one that uh, just but this personal but remember i'm an old uh I'm, a, I'm one of the guys coming out of the the stable uh, very at the very end. So just keep in mind that's what we're looking at. But but Tesla is very tradable. Uh, you know it trades in the 350 level. But uh, you know it it if you look at the patterns on the interday basis, it's really got some really nice patterns. Like any stock that's trading, you know, with a great deal of volatility that we're seeing in this, you'll see uh, you know quite a bit of that. So we'll be. Um, Will be that's right. The old dead dinosaurs. I was. I fact is, I had relatives that were part of that oil chain that turned into gasoline, not too far, not too long ago. So we'll see. Remember, we've been on this planet for uh, somewhere around four billion years. So when people try to tell you about the end of the world, uh, give them a little bit of a little bit of slack. They got to have a plus or minus of about ten or twenty thousand years, I would guess. So not to worry about it. The key is is like Tom O'Brien said, is, you know, live every day like it's a present and unwrap it because you never know what's going to happen. Um, we had a big scare here yesterday. Our good friend um, Kelly had a little bit of a problem. We had to take him to the hospital, but he's doing fine today. We're going to bring him home today, but it was quite scary. He's going to be 94 on March 1st, and he's still sharp as a tack. Anyway, there's also some posts about uh, Martin Armstrong talking about the Dow Jones reaching 40,000 in 2032. Uh, 2032, that's going to be tough for me to make that one, but uh, we'll see. And that's just with the 
compound annual growth of 4.9 percent. So they could certainly uh, certainly do that. There'll probably be a few corrections uh, on the way to 40,000 would be my guess. Folks, we haven't seen eight up months in the Dow Jones since Hector was a pup. Uh, and in the stock market, not just the Dow Jones, but everything else. So we'll see, uh, we'll see, be rocking in uh, in that too. So we'll 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 wait and see. Uh, you know, uh, look at one point in time. But when we gapped up with all these gaps that we've had in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you know, I'm a technician, folks, and that that lights up. Uh, that puts all the lights on the house on. It really does. So I don't know when they're going to start filling these gaps. And when we do get the big correction, whatever it is. It's going to be a great buying opportunity because we know one thing for sure, the shorts are absolutely scared to death, and we don't have to worry about that. And we are, we already know that that's a total flack, uh, you know, a, a fact. So we'll uh, be watching it. Now, one of the other trades that we've been watching uh, this week, of course, is the uh, copper. I wanted to get up here to uh, to show you this copper trade because we've just reached the price objective here. Of this other Gartley. Now, if you if you take a look at this copper, you know we we've just made the 61% um, retracement up here at this uh, 309 a pound. Uh, that was exactly equal to the last rally that we had from uh, November the uh, 20th into uh, the 27th. That seven-day rally. What did we do? We've had a seven-day rally again right into that. Another 13 cent rally coming in exactly at the 61% retracement folks on a trend following basis on a you know the shorter term this is still this in a downtrend since October the 9th so this is a low risk selling opportunity in copper uh, you know so I don't know if it's going to work or not but you have the same number of days up at the same price I mean that's time and price being equal you you can't ask for uh, you know anything better than that I mean it might not work but my goodness it's uh you know, spot on with what you're really trying to look at now. And, and the whole key to this is, you know, stop protection. So you don't want to risk more than uh, just a few uh, few cents, which is 500 bucks. That would be the maximum thing. you. So your stop would have to be right around the uh, 311 per pound level. So we'll see that uh, what's going on. Okay, I see that Bain Capital is going to manage Harvard's $3.4 billion real estate investments. Holy moly, that's a lot of money. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but um, Benjamin Franklin gave a hundred dollars to uh, Harvard when it started. Uh, well, it was it knows it started in sixteen something, I believe Harvard did, and then he gave him a hundred bucks and not to not to let the capital be used. And I think that hundred bucks is is well over it's millions of dollars now is what I've uh, been talking about. Yes, I realize that Mr. Chanos is on the the reason why I brought the chart up for Tesla folks was not to not to talk about either, you know, Musk or Chanos. These guys are they're very very successful. They just have different views of things. I mean, this is what this is what investing is about. It's either chocolate cake or white cake. Which one do you like? I mean, you you have to decide you know what you want to do. Anybody that says that, you know that that Musk is, uh, you know, full of baloney, he's got to be full of baloney themselves. Look what he's done. I mean, he did he he did PayPal for God's sake. Look what a wonderful company that was. And then he's you know he's got a, a space company and he's got the, you know I don't know anything about the uh, solar thing, but then he's built cars that, you know he's got a car that doesn't make any noise that can outrun a Corvette for heaven's sakes. You know, give me a break. You got to give the guy a little bit of credit, but you know they all come up and make a great, um, you know, a great case for this. You know, look at um, what was the other guy, uh, David Ackerman, with um, I forget what that company was with the health feud uh, that he was feuding with, and he had a big, you know, thing about that, and he finally, you know, he gave up the ghost. They're herbal herbalife. That's right. Thank you very much, uh, David. I appreciate that. But that there, that's just a person's opinion. That's one of the reasons why I do technical analysis, folks. I can't get involved with this. When I first became a technician, going back in the '60s, my college professor Jim uh, Noblet said, you know. I asked him about the Wall Street Journal. So I read it every day. He said, only if you have a parrot. And I said, why? He said, the only thing the Wall Street Journal is good for is putting it in the bottom of the parrot's cage. And I believe that. And uh, one of the problems was, is when I was living in California for uh, my daughter, who was uh, a young girl at 14 years old, her first date was with Bill O'Neill's son. And uh, so <laughs> he, and of course, he ran Investor's Business Daily. So anyway, 
that's it. That's what I feel about the, uh, the the stocks go up. There's more buying. Stocks go down. There's more selling. That's all you really need to know. Look at Enron when it was 95. It was a good buy at 90. A good buy at 80. A good buy at 60. A good buy at 20. A good buy at five. And good buy at zero. So you got to be careful. You got to put put a place where you say, okay, I can't take it anymore, and I just got to stand aside. And that's what you're trying to do when you're looking at some of these things is to see if you can get on the right side. And remember, you got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find the princess, and that's what trading is all about. You know, follow your losses, keep your losses as manageable as possible, and then try to catch a, you know, a nice win here and there, which you know, try to do occasionally, whether it's gold or pound or whatever it happens to be. And the euro, we're going to cover the euro when we come back. I promised one of our listeners that we would do that. Right after we come back from the big break, we're going to be talking about currencies, especially the dollar and the euro. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters in quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we got one of our friends from Las Vegas, Nevada. Larry, how are you? Good morning, Larry. You sound fit. Uh -huh. I've been up all night. <laughs> Had a little um, bit of a little bit of a medical problem in the neighborhood, oh, but where everything's good. So, what can I do for you, buddy? Got a question about a numismatic coin. I, I have a numismatic coin, and I, I want to sell it. And okay. to me, numismatic coins are like a rare painting with a gold yes. frame. I always know yes. what the gold is worth, but 
the painting, you never know until it goes to auction. You've got an idea maybe if something similar was sold recently, but the same thing with numismatic coins. My question is, how do I sell this properly to get the right price? Uh, okay. You know, now we can sell stuff on the Internet, or I live in a city where there's plenty of coin dealers. How do, how do I do this right? Okay, uh, what kind of coin is it? Is it a gold coin? or? Yeah, it's a gold coin. It's uh, uh, graded 58. Um, uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if you want the particulars on it, but yeah, tell me, tell me what it is, so I can oh, okay. give you an it's idea. Okay, a, a cornet, two and a half dollar cornet, eighteen sixty nine, uh, grade of uh, fifty eight. Okay, here's here's what I want you to do is I want you to call Leroy. Okay. And he's at um, West Covina Coin. He was one of the guys that was involved with the uh, uh, William Redfield or uh, Laverne Redfield collect, co collection back in the seventies. Oh, he's uh, one of my very very dear friends. His phone number is six two six. Nine one five zero zero three three, and tell him that you talked to me, and uh, he will give you the scoop of what it's worth. And when he tells you what it's worth, that's what it's worth. He's a very nice guy. Uh, I've known him for forty years. I've done a lot of business with him, uh, and he is a he's a straight shooter. He doesn't uh, he doesn't move from the, the the white line very much. So, so that he'll was give you a pretty good idea. Zero, zero, three, three. Zero zero three three three. That's correct. Yeah. So I won't be having uh, to have to shop around and figure this no, out. No, 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 no. He'll tell you exactly what it's worth. I mean, oh, he'll, wonderful. I, you know, yeah, he'll tell you. Uh, he'll he'll be within probably fifty or hundred bucks of exactly what it's worth. But he he wow. knows all that stuff. In fact, he he was one of the guys that was in the PCGS when they first started, you know, uh, professional coin grading service with David Hall. Uh, David Hall happened to be a friend of ours too, and they we all used to play poker together. And of course, Leroy was one of the big guys because he really knew coins. He's been doing them since he was about six or seven, and um, he was a good friend of um, Steve Markoff. So that's how he got involved with that. But he's really he's really honest. He's really nice. Oh, good. And, um, okay. and he don't need the money, so you you don't have to. Uh, okay. You don't have to worry about that. He's just a really nice guy. He's a good friend too. So tell him yeah, I said hello, and oh, okay. he'll. Uh, He'll he'll help you because uh, you know he he's a straight shooter. Oh, good. There's so many shysters in that business. Oh, you know? uh, yeah. well, the, the, you just mentioned the reason why there is Larry is because what you said it's the grading. You yeah. know the difference between the grading between a 58 and a 60 could be two or three times the price of the coin. So if you can buy a coin that's a 60 and you buy it at a 58, you've made two grand. You know, and we yeah. happen to have someone, I'm not going to be off the, the, the step, we have a couple of, one person here uh, in the TFNN family that has a really great collection of stuff that uh, is very aware of this grading thing. And you've got to be very, very careful. If you go with the uh, ANA, the American Numismatic Association, or the PCGS, which is a professional coin grading service, they grade their coins, they're, they're almost spot on equal. Okay. In other words, if you gave each one of those, they'll do it. And Leroy knows this, so... Okay. He's going to be able to tell you what you're looking at, and you won't have to shop around. And you know, you oh, you're basically, you basically can tell you what it is. I'd, I'd rather get a root canal or buy a used car. Than, <laughs> you know. Hey, but root canals are I, I want to as... thank you about. Uh, uh, <laughs> I want to thank you about that um, story about uh, Redfield that you. Um, Oh yeah. Well, if you want to know the Redfield story, try to try. If, if Leroy's got the time, he'll tell you about it because he was involved in all of it. That's for sure. Fascinating. I mean, there's yeah. very little written about this guy. I don't know yeah. why. And what's written, what's written is not, what, yeah, what's written is not right. That that much I can pretty much uh, tell you. The stuff you read on the internet is not really what it was all about. Oh well, then there's no way to know because there's only one book written about him, and it's only after. Um, he, he moved to uh, Nevada, but he, I mean, just an amazing guy that uh, got into stocks in 1929, was able to accumulate wealth during the Depression, and then was smart enough to uh, come to Nevada because Nev uh, California was starting their state income tax, and he bought all that property around Lake Tahoe, and just, just an incredible, interesting story. Yeah, he was uh, definitely recluse for sure. But anyway, give Leroy a call. He'll I will. Help you Thank you very yeah, much, yeah. Larry. And you bet. And happy holidays to you, Larry. Oh, Merry Christmas. For calling in. Bye. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you, too. Thank you. Okay, you bet. Okay, we got a request now to take a look at the euro. I posted the euro chart. Uh, we've talked about this head and shoulders pattern that we've uh, been looking at. Uh, the euro has been down here around this 17 and changed now several, uh, several times. 
Let's try these words one at a time. Several times trying to see if it's going to hold that bottom. Uh, there should be a very uh, strong uh, spot to take a look at it at the um, 117 level. But if that fails, you know, you're going to be looking at something that could be, you know, uh, a whole lot worse. And you don't want to, uh, you don't really want to see that happen if you're if you're watching this. Now, one of the things that you do when you're looking at the euro is uh, you want to be looking at the U.S. dollar uh, at the same time. And as we mentioned here, uh, let, I can, well, this is the old chart. We've had a sell-off here that after we hit the 61% retracement, we pulled down uh, for a couple days here. That's what brought the euro up. And now we're, we're setting at some major support here uh, in the, uh, the euro at the 117 level and also in the dollar index. The resistance is, of course, up at the highs there at that 94.20 level. We get above that, the euro is toast, and it's going to go down, you know, a whole lot lower. So keep in mind that that's, uh, you know, one of the things that we're that we're watching here. Yesterday we were talking about the predicament of the Australian dollar. Remember, we were we were looking at the Australian dollar because it had that really strong move, and uh, we were looking at it to see what do you do here because you're right up against this 20-man line. And folks, we hit that line uh, yesterday absolutely spot on. I mean, it couldn't have been any closer. And uh, the, the, the game plan was if you got above that 77 level, the original buy, of course, was at 75.10. That was the one we were looking at on the, uh, you know, the longer term. This is when we were watching on Monday. And what happened is, you know, we've had this tremendous move here of a couple points, uh, almost three handles now. Well, no, yeah, two handles. Yeah, 77, 75 is two handles. So if we close above that 77 level, that would be a very, very bullish uh, time in the um, uh, thing. The, yes, correct. Uh, the the high of the day has been uh, 76.91. If we get above that 77 level on a closing basis coming into a weekend, um, you know, you have to look. Now, you got to remember, folks, that there's a strong probability that some of these currencies will have trend changes right around the first of the year. And we're only a couple weeks away from the first of the year. So we need to be alert to that. It doesn't happen every year, but it's something we want to keep uh Keep a very close, uh, very close eye on for sure. So that's uh, another one that looks, you know, extremely interesting. You know, is a, a fact. All of them, every one, the the, uh, the Australian dollar, the Swiss franc, the euro, the pound, the yen, and the yen has really got support. We're very at this 112 level in the yen, folks. Uh, we're down around 112, 12 or something like that. Here we are, Friday, boy. You got to be really, really alert on that one because that one makes. Uh, uh, the gold move too so uh, pay pay very close attention to that uh, so we'll take a little break here we'll be right back 877-927-6648 Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Ever Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. 
On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. As Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Thicker Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, Trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I've almost uh, forgotten that we're going to have a new uh, Bitcoin futures uh, coming in Sunday from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange competing with the CBOE. Uh, this so far we've hit the uh, level of uh, 1810 I believe on the Bitcoin um, uh, price and we're trading at around 1710, 17,010, 100 and so this is going to be, I mean I don't know what's going to happen but uh, John Jameson who's uh, going to be doing a great newsletter on cryptocurrencies, he's got it all ready to go, it'll probably be coming out right at the first of the year it's just incredible. I talk to him every day. I learn something every day about this stuff. But uh, the more and more you look at it, there must be something here because uh, there's a lot of people involved that are pretty smart. And there's a lot of people that are involved that are not that smart. But if you got in early, you're pretty smart because you've made a, a great deal uh, a great deal of money. I know one gentleman uh, from the U.K. was in uh, four years ago at under $10.00. And he's still holding his bitcoins. He hasn't got a lot of them, but you don't need a lot at this price. So, but he's doing uh, he's doing quite well. He happens to be a press reporter, a financial reporter that interviewed me a few times. A really nice fellow that I happened to meet. Uh, we had a request to talk about the uh, the wheat market, folks. Uh, we 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 looked at this wheat uh, several times here. I believe I still have my chart up here in the wheat. Oh, just give me one second. I believe we do. Uh, oh, no, I, I don't have the wheat, but let's just get, uh, since we're talking about this right now, the wheat, in other words, that March wheat had a really strong uh, spot to look at it here uh, at this uh, level. But I wanted to, to, to bring some information to you. You know, I work with uh, Sylvia's Financial, and um, we'll see. Uh, John, are you on the line? Oh, maybe not. Well, I thought I had John on the line, John Jameson on the line. Evidently, I don't. If you call into TFNN, John, uh, they'll try to get me connected. But this is a chart for Christmas corn of 18, in other words, a year out. And this is what he's looking at. Of course, he looks at really long-term things. And what we're waiting for is to see if this corn, for Christmas corn, can get down to this 1.618 level. And here again, we have a, a pretty strong seasonal uh, coming in at this level where you're going to be able to um, – um, you know, see whether it's going to hold that level. So remember, wheat and corn are totally different. 
Uh, gee, that's a big surprise. But uh, the wheat has already bottomed, as near as I can tell. We're up about 10 cents uh, from the bottom. That doesn't mean we can't go down and test it again. And we've got some you know, big stuff coming in as far as seasonals in wheat and corn. So we're still watching those very closely. We're getting a little bit of a pullback in the beans, which is what we'd like to see also. And so these are the things that we're keeping an eye on. We're also going to have side only on a little bit more often in the, uh, the new year. I've worked out a deal with him where he can come on for 10 or 15 minutes and uh, see that. John, are you on the line? I am, Larry. Yes, can you hey, hear me? Hey, hey, thanks, buddy. This is John Jameson from the Jameson Letter in the U.K. John, we got futures coming in Sunday night for the CMA. Do you expect some more volatility like we saw last Sunday? Yeah, I think so. I think um, I think the action. You know, I'm I'm um, still bullish. I lost connection. Are you there? Ten four. Uh oh. Oh, uh, looks like. Oh, uh, Larry, I'm back. Hello. Oh, good, good. good. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I'm I'm expecting I'm expecting higher prices. As I said in the letter last weekend. Now, you, you also look at some of the smaller cryptocurrencies, the ones that have not moved a lot. You know, you're still looking at some of those? Yeah, we had uh, some early this week, we had some big moves, not so much in the smaller ones, but in Ethereum uh, and in Litecoin. But I'm also, I, in, to answer your question, yes, I do also look at um, two or three other coins. Um, one is uh, ADA or Cardano, mm -hmm. and the other one is IOTA. And um, the reason for that, if you want me to go into that, Larry, I don't know whether you yes, want me to go do. That. Yes, please uh, do. Yes, the yeah. folks are really interested because there's so much bad information out there. And uh, oh, we have a first question. Uh, what's your info? What's your feeling on Riot? Um, agnostic. Agnostic, <laughs> non-believer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that that's the answer to that. Can you tell us? Can, can you tell us why? That seems like that's the one that came out of nowhere, isn't it? And uh, has just really has all the earmarks of a scam. Is that? The one you're talking yeah, what, about? Uh, what it is, what I do, and what uh, the letter um, is focused on is is themes and looking looking at looking at themes and things that I that I think are, have a chance uh, of surviving uh, in the future. And one of those one of those themes, for example, is privacy. Another one is infrastructure. You know, it, it, <clears throat> there's a as we've talked about before. There's a, a virtual machine basically getting rebuilt on top of the internet right now. Mm. And most of these technologies will fail. A lot of them are getting hyped massively. Um, IOTA had a huge move up um, a couple of weeks ago, a few days ago, and um, that was pumped and dumped. And so, you know, there was a lot of rumors that they'd done a deal with Microsoft that, that actually they hadn't done a deal with Microsoft that was completely um, sort of false news. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, um, yeah, so that's what we do and have a look. And there's so many coins coming out that I tend to focus on ones that I understand, um, you know, technically as well. So not just the fundamental reasons, but also ones that look like there's a supply demand imbalance and it looks like it's going to go higher. So cause... they're mentioning here that that riot is not even in the Bitcoin business. Is that correct? Um, I don't know a massive amount about it, to be honest. Um, I, I concentrate on on two or three um, you know, smaller coins and focus my attention on those rather than jumping around all over the place. Yeah, there's well over twelve thousand of them, aren't there? Something like that. You said to me once. Uh, the exact number I can't remember, Larry. To be honest. <laughs> but it's in the thousands, yeah. though. Is that correct? Yeah, I'd have to. Tell, I'd have to yeah. check up online when I'm talking to you yeah. right now. If you want me to? Yeah. I can find out. Okay. Hey, tell us a little bit about the letter you're coming out with after the first of the year. Yeah, it's um, it's basically focused on um. On, on three or four main tools that we use to have to track what the miners are doing uh, on the main coins and whether we can spot trend, uh, basically trend continuation patterns or trend rotations. So, for example, rotating out of Bitcoin and into altcoins. Um, last week or this week, just gone, just ending now, we had a rotation um, into Litecoin and Ethereum. And um, one of the things one of the things we look at in the letter is whether um, which coins are over and undervalued compared to the others. And there are various ways of doing that. One of the ways uh, we look at market cap, and another way is to look at spreads. And um, right within, within a few days, um, Litecoin basically corrected itself because it was, it was hugely undervalued compared to Bitcoin. So 
scanning scanning the market for that and also looking for accumulation in that particular coin and accumulation patterns. And the letter focuses on um, normalized volume and price action. So yeah, that's okay. that's what the that's what we focus on. Well, if you had to pick one, John, between Ada and Iota, you know, for something out into the future, which would you pick? <laughs> well, I got to put that's you a, on the spot. Great... This is not a free business, you know. <laughs> no, yeah. How about fifty-fifty? Well, put a little bit in each one. That uh, would be uh, the best thing. I'm not going to sit on the fence. Um, <laughs> I pick both. <laughs> oh, you pick both. No, there I, you go. I, there you go. I I actually own both. Um, which okay. one succeeds is literally a coin toss. And if you want me to get more technical yeah. than that, I, we'll look I don't at know. The, we'll look at your letter when it comes out. But you're looking at ADA, which is Cardano, right? ADA yeah. is the symbol yeah. Cardano and IOTA, which is yeah. also a big one. Listen, uh, we're going to have you on again really soon. But we want to wish you a very happy holidays to you, John. And thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it, buddy. My pleasure, Larry. Talk soon. Talk to you later, pal. Bye-bye. John Thank Jameson you. of the Jameson Letter be out in 2018 covering the crypto curve, well actually blockchain so, so that's what we want you can take a little break there we'll be right back 877-927-6 Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we're going to take a look here at this Dow chart that I talked about earlier in the show. You notice we have the seven gaps. We've already filled one, and we've already we're rallied up again. We're almost making a new high today, but uh, we've got six more gaps to fill. When they're going to be filled and and how, I don't know, but uh, technical analysis history says that you know we certainly should uh, fill them. Now, I do want to spend just a few minutes about uh, talking about cattle. 
We'll take a look here at February cattle here. You'll notice that we've been waiting for this market to get down to that uh, just tad below the 118 level. We hit it the exact uh, ABCD pattern of that move at uh, 117.75 was the low. We're trading at 119 and change now. Um, your stop has to be right below the low, which would have been right near your entry point, because if you break below that, it's not going to be looking very good. And one of the things you have to be uh, aware of here, you notice the bottom was made on uh, Thursday, and we've had a excuse, let's try it again, Larry. Bottom was made on a Tuesday. We've had a couple of day rally, but it didn't go very far to the upside, as opposed to what happened in the gold. We were looking for the bottom to come in gold, and it exploded out of there. Cattle have not done that. So you've got to look at that as a potential for a uh, failure and so you've got to pay uh, very very close attention to that because it's that such strong support there if that strong support uh, doesn't hold you're looking at the tapioca and uh, you certainly don't want to stand in front of that that's going to be a, a really nasty one if it certainly uh, if it certainly does it so I think everything will probably boil down in the stock market to what's going on with this tax bill and frankly there's so much animosity and in uh, you know politics these days and my gosh anything could happen and it usually does so make sure you uh, protect yourself and also this is Christmas season folks and by the way I want to thank everybody in the den we fed well over a hundred people for Christmas folks God bless you uh, it was uh, really really great to, to do that so anyway here's what we're going to do here we're going to have our good friend Norm Winsky on on Monday we got the full moon going to be rocking and rolling again so live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may god bless thank you folks hi folks tom o'brien here if you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!